Crypto is setting up for the opportunity of a lifetime, like buying Solana at $1. And that's because we have now entered into a major, major pullback. But this in the context of a new crypto cycle that should, if history repeats itself, take Bitcoin to astronomical new highs eventually. And in the meantime, we've seen the market tip its hand as to what the market leaders will be. The next Solanas of this cycle have shown themselves loud and clear. And I'm going to show you on the charts a corollary moment from past cycles that you can understand why, literally, this is like buying Solana at $1. We're going to go through everything from the macro backdrop, the actual stage of the Bitcoin bull run, the coins within the market that we've talked about, their entire performance since we've been talking about them, and my plan to accumulate coins in this particular dip that I think are going to perform astronomically well as soon as the market gets over this indigestion from the Bitcoin ETF. This is going to be another Bible on how I'm navigating the market. If you're excited about that, destroy that like button and let's dive in. First and foremost, let's acknowledge the big elephant in the room, which is that mainstream markets are absolutely going bananas. We have the NASDAQ at a new all-time high. That's all-time high in history. The NASDAQ has never been higher. And we also have the S and P at a new all-time high. It's never been higher. Of course, we have people like this saying that, no, this is how it always happens before a recession. And the recession talk has started to get louder and louder over recent weeks. Of course, if you do look at this chart, and I'll point this out, the all-time high that we saw here in 2008 was after nearly a decade of the market climbing after the dot-com bubble had burst. I don't think it's a great corollary to where we're at today. The second time we see pointed out here was obviously in 2020, which literally this lasted about 10 seconds and then we got a new all-time high. So of these examples here presented on the page, none of these really seem like direct corollaries. Though again, I don't want to focus on macro here. I just wanted to point out the people screaming that this is bearish. I'm just looking at the examples and don't see a good corollary to what we're seeing right here. But it's time to talk about the real big elephant in the room, the 10,000 pound gorilla, which is that, hey, look, I got it wrong. I got it wrong on the Bitcoin ETF pump. Again, this is the game of crypto. Sometimes you're going to win and sometimes you're going to lose. And again, I got it wrong, which means that we're not astronomically up in profits. But if you're buying spot crypto bags and not trading on leverage, you still have those bags. So when the market reverses, which is what I expect at some point in the future, you still have your positions. This is why I always trade spot and don't do leverage trading. That said, it's time to raise my hand and say, look, I thought this one would be more bullish than it was. But the flip side is that if this were to be as bullish as I thought it was going to be, then it would have effectively moved the Bitcoin cycle up by about a year, if not more, if we were navigating by the four-year cycle. This in some ways is exciting because you get this instant gratification, but for a cycle to be long and fruitful and actually go to astronomically big numbers, you kind of want it to build more steadily as opposed to just a skateboard ramp right up to Valhalla. That would mean that we would have probably seen a top to this cycle in early 2024, which doesn't give us much time to have a lot of fun here with the coins. So while we got rejected and I was wrong about the Bitcoin, ETF being a big pump, I'm actually seeing now a lot more correlation with prior cycles. Here you can see we perfectly touched the 618 FIB retracement line here. We did this again in 2016, 2019, and here we are in 2024 doing it again. Now, if you look at this graphic, you can see that a 30% retracement, which is what we had the last times, would put us at about $35,000. Now, remember, I was telling you guys that the low 30s are about where I see this train stopping if we're going to remain in that bullish posturing. Of course, we could get a freaky wick down to the high 20s, which would make everybody think it's over. Maybe that's the head fake we're looking at and then going onwards and upwards. Now, the one thing I want to make very clear is that we haven't seen the energy out of the altcoins that I've been expecting either, which means that either that's about to happen over the next few weeks or that we're saving some of that energy for later on in the cycle. Either way, we can adjust to this information as it comes. And I remain, of course, very bullish on what's going to happen here throughout the cycle. As Neste here says, BTC narratives change, but cycles don't. Support and resistance flip next. As you can see here, he's calling for us to come down to test this little middle beige line here during a reaccumulation phase before we expand to new all-time highs. He goes even deeper in this graph and shows that he expects an ABC structure with Bitcoin coming down here to about 38,000 or a little below. We've already seen that. Then pushing up towards 46,000 right as we're coming into the halving and then dumping post-halving to about the low 30s. That's his ABC wave and that would be the effect of the damage. Now, I want to be clear. If you're shitting bricks here and you're so scared that you think you might lose everything. Well, 
First of all, welcome to crypto. That is the nature of the game. If you can't handle this downside, you're not going to be there for the upside. You just have to be able to stomach it and you have to be able to be comfortable with the fact that you could really lose a shit ton of money here. And once you accept that, you become Zen Buddhist about it. You meditate on it. You accept that it all could go to nothing and you're okay with whatever happens with your coins short term. That's how you set yourself up for being there for the rocket ride if we're so lucky to see it later this year. But I want to be clear, the way charts bounce, it's very, very likely that we'll see a major run up here at least to the low 40,000s, if not the mid 40,000s, even if we still remain in this overall downtrend for the next few weeks and months, you will always see some kind of convincing rally. If you're really scared. If you felt like you got way off sides and you want to chance it at trading the market, that would be your chance to sell some positions into that pump up to those close to prior all time highs. But again, if we're below about 46,000, we're still not very bullish. That could easily come back down and test lower. And that's precisely what this graphic says here. Again, usually after a big blow off top in Bitcoin, you will see some liquidity flow down to the altcoins. We have definitely not seen this rip roaring alt season yet. So either that's coming or the entire market is just really reaccumulating for a new phase later this year. And again, we're going to go through each and every position that I think is relevant here. But first, I want to keep discussing the macro backdrop of why I think Bitcoin is still set up for a massive year this year. Now, going to Arthur Hayes, who's been our whisperer about macro and specific specifically new liquidity coming in from the federal government through a variety of confusing mechanisms that you know normal people wouldn't quite understand. Well, he's been our guy and he's saying, hey, look, we now see a headline that says the Fed is preparing a rule to force banks to tap the Fed discount window. He's saying this is leading him to assume that they will not continue the bank term funding program, which was their you know multi-trillion dollar blank check to the banks this year. Maybe in an election year, it's not so popular, but effectively, this is a new stealth money printing program. Program. Again, this stuff is all a little in flux, but we'll have more information on it soon. Overall, markets tend to do really, really well in election years. Remember that as we analyze the overall structure of new liquidity in the markets. But beyond this, we're looking at one of the biggest regulatory wins that we've seen in the history of the crypto industry, and that is this Coinbase lawsuit with what experts think are now a 70% chance of full dismissal. And this is from a litigation analyst expert here. Now, Mr. Elliot Stein, who's got, if I dare say, a fantastic name name, saying he went into the SEC versus Coinbase hearing thinking Coin would, on this motion, win dismissal of primary claims concerning trading but not the staking and broker claims. He left thinking Coin would win full dismissal. Now, the summary here, if you haven't been following the trial, is that Coinbase has been absolutely crushing this litigation against the SEC and that the SEC has not been able to form a coherent argument about how tokens will be securities. In fact, the judge has been openly hostile towards the SEC's claims that effectively all tokens are securities, claiming instead that the way the SEC is wording things, it would sweep in sneakers, collectibles, Pokemon cards, and literally Literally anything that could potentially go up in value if you buy it as a security that should be federally regulated. And the judge was really very clearly not having that. This could determine the fate of cryptocurrencies and specifically altcoins here in the United States. And like I said, I've always been a massive optimist that crypto will have a home in the United States, that innovation will have a home in the United States. And this case could pave the way for a landmark ruling here that would protect the ability to build and develop the most important important possible protocols for crypto here in the United States. Again, as an American, I can't help but be extremely bullish about that. But let's get to the fun part. We're about to jump into the coins, the coins that I'm looking at and why I think this is an opportunity, just like buying Solana at a dollar. Let's take a look. Now, as you can see here, Solana trading at $81. Well, it wasn't always trading at $81. And if we look here, one of the early market moves it had during 2020, you could see it went from about 50 cents here up to just under five bucks call it a 10x just for simple math, you can see almost a thousand percent increase from you know early 2020 when the token was released up to the DeFi summer that we experienced just after the halving in 2020. This was actually the first real altcoin move that we saw in the entire cycle last cycle. There was a move from Bitcoin from 3K up to 14K in the summer of 2019. A lot of people think that that's the part of the cycle we're in. But what I'll point out is altcoins barely moved. They barely budged and it led everyone to put on their Bitcoin maxi hat and say, hey, look, maybe altcoins just aren't a thing. Maybe we were totally hallucinating during the 2017 run and we should really just abandon these technologies. That was the talk of the town in the summer of 2019. I remember it clearly like it was yesterday. And this is really important that you remember the sentiment and the tone around different moments in the market from prior cycles. And something I hope I can help you with just because I've probably been here longer than a lot of you. Though probably not all of you. Shout out to the OGs in the audience. My point is, 
you can see here, this was the first real altcoin move that we saw in the entire space of the last cycle. And you saw coins like Solana go absolutely bananas. But then look, as soon as we hit September, everything nuked. And you see it go from about $5 all the way down to $1.21. That's almost an 80% correction. Absolutely brutal. Five bucks down to Solana at a dollar. And that's where I think we're at right now, where we've just seen this massive move from altcoins. And now we're seeing the first big retrace. And if we don't get an altcoin season here, well, I think that this move can be correlated very significantly to that Q3 2020 moment where altcoins took an absolute bloodbath. But for those who understood what the market was telling them and the strength of certain projects in the market, the opportunity to have accumulated coins like Solana, coins that had shown tremendous strength early on in the cycle, like Rune, like Phantom, like all of these DeFi coins. Well, we all know what happened next. Soul flew from $1.20 up to over $250. And that was the power of betting on the early strong movers in the market. And we now have the opportunity to observe what has happened after the first big move of altcoins in this cycle and make a very clear shopping list. Understand which coins we want to be getting involved in. Again, we is up to you to decide. I'm just sharing my own observations. And here's a great time for me to remind you guys altcoins are major major high risk opportunities in fact everything in crypto can literally go to zero zero you could lose every dime you put into any coin in this industry no matter how bullish no matter how exciting we are all effectively gambling with parabolic odds if you get it right you could be up 10x 20x even 100x if you get it wrong you could be out to zero and those are the odds that this fiat money printer system has forced us into speculating on assets is the single best way that most people will have to break free from this crazy world we're in in fact i just saw that movie dumb money i don't know if you guys have seen it it just hit netflix i actually had never seen it before but god it hit hard and it reminded me that there's just so many people that don't have the opportunity to really control their time to break free and to me cryptocurrency risky as it is is a bet that if you learn to understand to play the odds and to actually stay at the table long enough to see yourself hit a winner those are the moments that i think are really impactful that's why i do this that's why i believe in this industry but again you have to be comfortable with those odds again you've seen over the last month i haven't gotten it all right but over the long trajectory if you look back a little further we're still in good territory and i'll show you how i see that as you can see i have a massive spreadsheet here and this goes over all the different coins i talked about throughout q4 and I also have here when I covered it here on the channel and you can see here the gains and I've just updated the current valuations so that they reflect today's valuations again these could go lower so this could end up getting invalidated again guys I'm just playing these odds I'm trying to confer upon you my experience my perspective but this shows you that since we've been covering this particular move in the altcoins this particular new cycle a lot of these coins are still sitting on really healthy gains with you know four and a half x out of Solana 4.8 x out of Solana we have coinbase is still up almost 2x you have avalanche up 1.6x celestia 3.4 we have injective 2.8 we have a lot of crazy gains here uh, that gala that gala data was off i was off by a zero there but anyway the point is you can see beam still up 4.15x immutable x up 3.2x there's still a ton of gains here on the table games like Sidus up 5.3 and this is the type of transparency i'm trying to strive for to show you the good bad and ugly and show you even when we get slapped on the head if you've been playing the game and buying during the absolute terrible times in the market that when things get really frothy even if you don't play it perfectly you can still be in good standing you need to understand that this is a long game this is not a short-term game and if you see your portfolio over the course of cycles not over the course of individual weeks or days then even if you get it wrong like i did on the etf you can still be ready to crush it for the next moment which is what this video is all about which is we've seen the market tip its hand we know which coins and projects are hot tickets for this cycle we can actually make some pretty educated guesses as to where the heat and the excitement is going to be. And so during this difficult period, during this dip, it makes it easier to take a probabilistic bet on which things will outperform once the liquidity train returns. Now we actually learned that our old buddy Sam Bankman Freed and FTX sold about $1 billion of Grayscale's Bitcoin ETF. And this is because the bankruptcy is trying to sell and liquidate all its assets. And they were the ones who were the major seller, the major net seller, of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. So there wasn't actually as much Bitcoin outflows as we originally thought. In fact, most people bought into the Bitcoin ETF. And yes, they're sitting on some losses. But again, FTX sold all of their claims and they are now out of tokens to sell. This is, in my opinion, a good thing because we can see a major catalyst to the downside that no longer exists. It's just not there anymore. 
Understanding the source that we have gotten the dumps from and whether or not they'll continue is really, really important. And we've seen now that at least one major seller of the Bitcoin ETF is no longer holding coins. That's good. So again, remember, I have my macro barbell where I have crypto and treasuries. And I told you coming into the ETF, I'd put all my stable coins in the market. I was just really excited. I'm actually fully deployed here. But within my crypto barbell, I have my high conviction bucket and my zero infinity bucket. The zero infinity bucket is the super pump, super dump bucket. You know, those could go to a bazillion or zero. And then I have my high conviction, the stuff that I'm happy to sleep at night with because I'm very sure that those coins will live to fight another day. And that list is pretty simply Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, and Coinbase stock. So let's jump into those. Coin has taken a pretty massive beating here down in the 120s. And my goal, again, during this dip is to keep averaging in on Coinbase stock. And even though I have a ton of Coinbase stock, I actually have a gargantuan amount of Coinbase stock. I will look to make one big buy during this dip into Coinbase stock. Again, I'm not bullish on cash or US treasuries over the long run. And I believe that the reaction to the ETF and a lot of the emotional sell-off that happened around the ETF really, really screwed over Coinbase. I believe that Coinbase is sort of the Amazon of the mainstream company world when it comes to crypto. I'm very bullish on this stock to make new all-time highs this cycle. So as it comes down into these lower $100 range, I will be looking to DCA Coinbase on this dip. Another play I got into was Bitcoin miners. And I made the mistake of buying Bitcoin miners during this ETF run up. And these have gotten hit so, so hard. I mean, just look how crazy uh, this has gotten hit. I'm going to show you. This is already down. You can see from the top to the bottom here, we can see that it's over 50%, a 53% correction on Mara. Marathon Digital is kind of like, this is the, uh, the catch-all bucket, the easiest way to, to gauge the interest in minor stocks. This one got absolutely smoked. And so I'll be DCAing minor stocks on the dip as well. These are part of my high conviction bucket where I'm like, hey, look, I believe Bitcoin's coming back. And with it, we'll see things like Coinbase and minor stocks probably rip as well. So again, I'll be DCAing Coinbase as well as my minor stocks on the dip. Next, we have our sweet, sweet baby boy, Solana. And of course, this one we've been talking about since it was under 20 bucks here. And this was our main altcoin play in our high conviction bucket over the entire Higher cycle, it has performed grotesquely well. Currently, still today at $80, sitting at a full 10x above its bear market low of eight bucks. And what we can see here is that it's playing these levels pretty clearly. You can see that it had this uh, this high level that was actually significant here back in 2022. Um, it was significant again in 2021. You can see that this level got touched here, here, and we can see that it played off it here in the 120s, and that's what it's currently working as its resistance. We can also see that it has this low that it's touched a few times here um, all throughout the last uh, bear market, and we can see that once it broke below it here back in April of 22, it really cascaded down. Uh, we can see that it actually ripped once it was above that. It took some time to get above this uh, sort of high $70 level. Um, and now we're currently above it. You can see that we're still currently bouncing off of it. Will it hold? I don't know. But I'm just saying you can see the levels here are pretty clear with Solana. Again, I have so much Solana, I don't really need any more. My strategy with Solana is simple. I'm going to be rotating my profits from other coins into Solana throughout the cycle, as long as I feel like the cycle is continuing. And Solana, I believe, will continually grind its way up in fits and starts over the course of this cycle. It's the most exciting non-ETH play. It's actually capturing a ton of mindshare. And I've been doing a lot of research on what should be called Solana 2.0, which is actually their Fire Dancer update, which will be coming this year. And I believe that if that goes well, Solana will catch a major sort of tech based fundamental narrative. I think it'll be really, really bullish for Solana if Fire Dancer is as good as people think it is. So Solana has a lot of really cool things to look forward to. Now, of course, we have Ethereum, which has really just been the absolute laggard of the entire industry. And it has been pissing people off. But the reality is that so many people are sitting on fat stacks of ETH, bought mostly ETH and have seen ETH as the altcoin play of the entire industry that when it does run, the wealth effect will probably overwhelm. There's just so many people that are going to get filthy rich once ETH moves. So that's probably why it's taken so long. I don't know, just a little bit of a chess game here. But we do have the ETH ETF expectation that will start kicking in at some point this year. We know that BlackRock has filed for an ETH ETF. We know that the legal precedent that ETH has is actually going to set the stage for its ETF. And it's hard to see that ETH won't get an ETF at some point. In fact, we'll be doing a video on all the coins that we think BlackRock are going to accumulate because they have been tipping their hand on what they think is the biggest opportunities in the space. And that, my friends, is something that you're going to need to follow, subscribe, and put that bell notification on if you want the answers to that because it's going to be a massive video that's deeply researched and I think will forecast some of the biggest themes of this cycle, specifically which ones the traditional finance bros are going to want to buy. So that rounds out our high conviction bucket. And now let's talk about the more risky play 
place, the stuff that I am looking at as the highest extractable value here by focusing on during this dip. And the first and foremost that I think everyone, especially if you're not a massive wallet, if you're not a very sophisticated wallet here, you're going to be wanting to focus on IDOs. And most importantly, getting into the IDOs, not buying them on the secondary, but getting into the IDO platforms. Check this out. We've just had our first 300X from Satoshi VM, and this was on the Ape Terminal. To be honest, I haven't seen 300Xs since IDO, since the absolute peak of the market in 2021. In so many words, IDOs are completely back. And that means that IDO tokens that get you access to these early deals are going to be the things that get you the potential to invest in these before they hit the market. The potential, right? Even if you just had a $1,000 allocation to Satoshi VM, you could have made a $300,000 payday. So it doesn't really matter if it takes you, you know, 10K, 20K even to get into the IDO by buying these tokens. These are the things that can, with one good project, pay you right back. And I've been saying this during this dip, if IDO tokens, the ones that you need to get into those IDOs go on heavy discounts, well, now's your chance to rewind the clock and get in to the point where you can get some allocations in those upcoming projects. In my opinion, for retail audience, IDOs are the easiest way to make some really big initial wins that you can then steamroll roll into things like Solana. You take your 300K win on something like a Satoshi VM, you chuck it into Solana, and then when the market rips again, you're multiplying that. That is the way, in my opinion, to play the game. Checking out our good friend Johnny Hustle here, he points out that there are literally so many tokens coming to the crypto gaming ecosystem this year. We've talked about a lot of them. Mavia, Block Lords, Farcana, Benzilla, Endless Clouds, which is the Treeverse, and more and more. There's just so many. And most of these will be coming through Launchpad. So again, you can get ahead of these things and you want to be planning to get ahead of these things by getting access to Launchpad tokens. The two Launchpads that we've talked about are Seedify Fund, as well as the Neo Tokyo Citizen Run Launchpad that's run by and offered to citizens of Neo Tokyo. It's a completely decentralized project. But again, there are many in the ecosystem. Those are the two that we've covered more in depth on this channel. I am a co-founder of Neo Tokyo. So obviously I'm proud of the citizens that have built cool stuff there and constantly try to help those citizens navigate towards the best opportunities in the space. Next, I'll just put this one out there. Chainlink has been something we've been talking about but I actually got more bullish on Chainlink after we saw old Larry Fink go on TV, Mr. BlackRock himself, and talk about real world assets. RWAs or real world assets are going to be a trend, even if I think they're kind of stupid, which I do. I'm like, who wants to buy a treasury bond on the internet in crypto land when there's so many better opportunities? But big money loves predictable yield. They love government debt. And we're already seeing real world assets start to pique the interest of the public. So I will walk back my stance on real world assets. And it's specifically because I believe Mr. Larry Fink is going to cause his own mini bull run in RWAs. Now, some big RWA platforms are things like Injective, Chainlink, as well as Ondo Finance, but there are many, you'll see a lot of these. But again, if these get really, really depressed in values throughout this dip, looking at some real world asset platforms, well, I wouldn't be surprised to see those actually catch an amazing bid this cycle. So if we get some real steep discounts, those RWA platforms are eventually going to get giga shilled by the big, big money bags. And again, you can front run this by being active during this down period. Now we are only partway through our list, but before I go any further, I need to remind you that as a crypto participant, in 2024, you absolutely must be using a VPN. Without a VPN, you are pretty much flying naked. You are navigating blind in the world of cryptocurrency. Your IP address could easily be associated with your identity. And as you visit a ton of crypto sites, Etherscan, CoinGecko, whatever it might be, you're essentially putting yourself on lists of targets. So you want to make sure that you're using a VPN to hide your personal data and prevent the potential to be hacked. Again, I was hacked last year and it was literally one of the most traumatic things I've been through and I could have hit a ton of my personal data and made it much harder on the hackers by using NordVPN. NordVPN is literally a few dollars a month. It's almost free. And like I've said before, you can make a lot of mistakes in crypto, but not using a VPN is not a mistake you'll be forgiven for because it's so cheap and easy to do. So do yourself a favor, get NordVPN. You can get a big fat juicy discount by using my link in the description below. And as always, I'd like to thank Nord for sponsoring the channel. Now let's get to the fun stuff because I've been talking about Solana at $1, but to understand what could be the next Solana or what could could be the Solana.
Solana at $1 opportunity, we should probably explore the bucket that Solana is in, which is effectively the super fast blockchain. Now, it's worth noting that the buzzword, the actual exciting word that everyone's been using for these fast blockchains is parallelized EVM, parallelized, parallelized. You can say that it's easy enough to say that. Not, not for me, but maybe for someone else. The parallelized EVM or parallelized blockchain is the concept that there are layers to the blockchain and that one layer isn't doing every single function. In the case of Ethereum, every function is being rooted through the same line to actually get processed. And you can think of parallelized blockchains as having multiple lines for different types of transactions to go through. And there are several in this category and actually Solana is parallelized. It's not an EVM, but it is a parallel blockchain. Now in this extremely exciting world of parallel function blockchains, which I believe are the ones that people are going to look at for this type of compute. We know that Say has been the hot ticket. Of course, it's still in profits from when we called it. As we can see here, we talked about it around uh, 36 cents or so. So it's uh, not quite a 2x here, but it's, it's definitely well above where we talked about it. But more to the point here, this thing has been an absolute rocket. Look at how much this has gone up. It's almost gone straight up, you can see in the last few quarters. So again, this doesn't have much price history. So if it comes way down here, you might be able to scoop up some Say at a major major discount. And this, of course, would be the opportunities to load up on stuff when it's not trendy, but you've already seen that the market has validated that it's very, very excited about this particular project. So we want to take that mentality. And again, there are tons of projects here. I can't cover thousands of projects here on this channel. So if you want to apply this type of mental framework to other tokens, meaning we know that parallelized execution is a huge narrative. We know that like Celestia, which we'll talk about in a second, the data availability layer being separated from the execution layer. Those are exciting topics and things that the market is very excited to jump into. Well, those are the types of opportunities that we want to have on our radar during these dips. Again, you can take this mental framework and apply it to projects that I don't talk about here when there's not hundreds of thousands of people watching the same information as you are. And again, big thank you to everyone who's been following this channel. It has been extremely exciting to see all the love about the content that has happened over Q4, and it has inspired me to make only the top level of content for you guys. So if you guys have been enjoying that, just know I really appreciate it. What are some other parallelized blockchains? We actually have Nier. Nier's not as well talked about. It certainly didn't get the hype wave in Q4 that others did. You can see that it's barely up off its lows here. Uh, we also have Sui. Sui's definitely a newer one. You can see it almost started to break into price discovery, but got rejected there. Again, if Sui comes down, this could be one to watch as well. And then we also have Celestia. Now, Celestia is a data availability layer. It's uh, not quite the exact same thing as the parallelized blockchain narrative, but we know that Celestia has been an absolute rocket ride here starting at two bucks, made its way all the way up to 20, a clean 10x, just like remember what Solana did back in 2020, and now it's starting to come down. So if this thing comes down, you know, if it has an 80% retrace, uh, like we saw with Solana back in the day, well, that could bring it down here to, you know, four bucks or five bucks back when we first talked about it. And that wouldn't necessarily mean that it's not a hot ticket for this cycle. Again, you want to look for these incredibly strong projects and then hope they go on major discount early in the cycle so you can jump in. This is not the time in the cycle for you to be looking for utter shit coins. You do not want to be buying garbage early in the cycle. You want to be loading up on high conviction stuff that still has the potential to 20, 30, 50x or more because that's the reality is that it's still possible with really good tech, really good coins, coins that have major liquidity so that when you want to sell them, you could just click the red button and boom, you're in cash. That's why you want these big projects, these big layer ones, these high tech, really cool ecosystems. You don't need to go down the risk spectrum just yet. In my opinion, you should really be focusing during this dip on the super high quality stuff that's shown that the market likes it. And again, if you were staking Celestia, as we told you to do, you could have gotten this Dimension airdrop. You know, Dimension is the first big project that has come to the Celestia ecosystem. And you can see that this is, this whole project is this roll up as a service. The home of the roll apps. They're trying to make a roll app a thing. They're, they're trying to make fetch happen, okay? Um, but the idea here is that anyone can spin up a, a fast app chain and it can leverage this dimension framework here. Again, this was an airdrop made available. If you were staking some TIA, you should have gotten your dimension airdrop. Again, this is the layers of value that you get by just being active in the community. And we told you this was going to happen as well. Next, it's hard not to like injective on the dip. If it comes down a lot, you could just really see a lot of reasons why uh, this will be a hot ticket. One, it's just a strong performer in the market. The market loves it from a trading perspective, but also it's in that real world asset category. And it will probably be one of the main category leaders for that. As this becomes more of a hot topic going forward, I could really see them crushing and being a leader there. So if this thing comes way down off of its high, let's see, it's high here um, was about 45 bucks. So if it comes way down during this dip, 
injective would be a screaming buy. And now getting over to the AI coins, again, Akash, this is a project that we've been supporting now for years and years, and we can see it's just trudging up a gorgeous chart, uh, but it has been pretty much up only here since early 2023. In my opinion, discount buys on Akash are absolutely a screaming buy. They are my favorite AI play, but we'll be introducing some other AI plays. And quite frankly, I've taken some really cool investments in the space, and I've started to see a really nice network of AI plays that are focusing on leveraging decentralized compute, which is what Akash does. And I think that that space is where I see the most logic around investing, because we don't know what types of AI are going to completely win out, but we know that it all requires massive amounts of compute power and that blockchain can create competitive fee markets for those. So that's where I think there is a huge opportunity and I'll be looking to invest in a lot of those. So again, Akash is definitely one of the ones that I think you'd be quite foolish not to want a little of. Again, I have a validator on that network. You can stake to it. It's called Elio Trades New. Make sure to check it out and stake to that validator. Now, finally, this would not be complete, of course, without gaming. Now, gaming, of course, is my pride and joy, my main focus in this industry. And one of the reasons why I've been pretty slow on content over the last few weeks is that I've been heads down working probably harder than I've ever worked in my life on something that you guys will get to see very shortly. Market conditions are things we can't predict, but I've literally never in the history of my time here in crypto land had more fun working as I have over the last few weeks. And so as you can see here, the Superverse DAO has tweeted, the silence is deafening, but it won't last much longer. And that is the truth. I highly, highly recommend that you go to Superverse DAO on X right now and go ahead and notify, turn that bell on because there will be some awesome announcements coming up. Again, the market has been super choppy, but I don't really care. I'm so excited for the community to learn what the foundation has been doing, the evolution of the project, and all the things that will contribute to the next phase of Superverse DAO. I don't want to take any vibes away from that upcoming announcement. Please go ahead, follow the project if you haven't, and make sure to flip that bell on. It doesn't matter how long this choppity chop goes on. It's all about delivering and shipping cool stuff. Again, we try to predict the markets here. We do a good job, but no one can control the market. What you can control is your daily effort and production, and I'm so excited to reveal what's coming next. Again, bell on for all that excitement. I'm a very proud co-founder right now. Now, of course, the biggest crypto gaming token in the market right now is Immutable X, IMX. They had an absolutely monstrous run here off the lows of, you know, uh, 50 cents or so. Off the 2023 lows that were just about 50 cents, they went all the way up to $2.50, 500% growth here, and they're settling off nicely. Again, we were pushing this thing all throughout the bear market. Again, I am a seed investor in Immutable X, and I am a holder of every token I've mentioned on this particular broadcast. So just know I am invested. I am a part of this. I hope all these things go up. I'm biased. You can say that, but I'm rooting for Immutable X to become an absolutely elite token in the market. And again, if this thing comes way down, this is your chance to get some blue chip gaming exposure on the dip. Same here with Beam. Beam is a collective of many different prongs here. It was previously Merit Circle, and there has just been an absolutely monster run up here of Beam. It went from 0.004 cents here uh, all the way up to almost you know two and a half cents, which is over 500% here. Absolutely monstrous growth. And you can see here that as it settles, again, Beam is blue chip gaming exposure exposure. In my opinion, I'm a big holder, big believer. And if you want to get into these diversified bets on crypto gaming on the dip, these are your chances. That's why it's a huge opportunity when these things cool off for you to get a piece of these assets at better prices. And finally, the same can be said of Cedify. They're the leading gaming launchpad. This is the IDEO stuff we were talking about. Again, this thing peaked recently at about four bucks. You can see it at 270 already on a pretty nice discount, but we'll see how low this thing goes. Again, the more Cedify you have, the more allocations you can get into their IDOs. This is how it goes. And this is why launch pads are some of the best things to watch during the dip. Now, before I go, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you about airdrops. We know that on Solana, if you've been trading at all on Solana using their main decks, Jupiter, you'll probably be eligible for their airdrop. But if you really want to get to the next level, we'll actually be talking about how to farm that airdrop with something called Sower. There are some more advanced techniques here that I'll be going into because if you're a smaller wallet starting out, aping in with, you know, what is a meaningful or potentially a huge amount of funds for you into random altcoins, Coins, it could either be great for you or it could be absolutely catastrophic. But farming airdrops is almost certainly going to be a way for you to make money. And the Solana ecosystem is going to be some of the best airdrops this season. So learning to do this is absolutely huge. Again, if you want to check out this tweet by Not Short here, you can check out how to use Sower. Again, it's a little more advanced, so I'll be making a video on it in the not too distant future. Well, there you have it. The opportunity of a lifetime, like buying Solana at a dollar. And I'm not kidding. This is after the first major altcoin move of the cycle. And if we see things settle 
battle out. Again, look at when Solana went from 50 cents to five bucks in 2020 and then came down to a dollar. And that was before an almost 300x run, a 260x run or something like that. Again, listen to what the market is telling you. I believe we are still early on in the cycle. I could be wrong, but I have a huge amount of chips placed on this particular bet. We should be due for some pumps in the market. Again, Bitcoin could rally up here into the mid 40s. If you've been scared, if you really wish you had sold some in those mid 40 range or wherever you wish you had sold, that could be your opportunity to sell. Again, like I told you on the last episode, I'm in a holding pattern because I was buying so much and I'm pretty much fully allocated here in crypto land. I will buy more if things get really, really bloody, specifically around Coinbase stock and Bitcoin miners. And then I may just go ahead and dollar cost average some more crypto with my treasuries if the opportunity arises, if we get some below 30,000 type levels. But for right now, I'm just sticking to the plan. And I'm really excited about the opportunity in front of us, what the market has validated and how clear the signals are about the coins that the market likes, knowing that we may get a chance and opportunity of a lifetime here to stack up and accumulate while once again, the market turns its back on cryptocurrency, tries to declare that the market is dead and over, that no one will ever make a dime here again while Jim Cramer is victory lapping on us. These are the types of moments that make for great buying opportunities. Again, if you enjoyed this, make sure you smash that like button, make sure to follow Superverse on Twitter and put that bell notification on and I will see you very soon on the next episode.